Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today is part three, where I go through the process and show you exactly how to paint this sign. Let's get started. I'm going to seal the wood with the shellac clear and to do that I'm just using a foam brush. I would use a bigger wider foam brush but this is the only one that I've got right now so this is what I'm going to use. And I want to put a generous amount of the sealer on the wood and I want to be able to let it soak in. Good thing about shellac is that it dries real quick. So in about 15 minutes, this actually should be dry and I can sand it slightly and put a second coat. I want this sealed good because the next thing after I do this, I'm going to go ahead and paint the first color which is going to be black. So this whole board will be black. I'm going to let this dry probably 24 hours and then we'll go ahead and carve it. So that's going to be the process that I use. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. It's completely dry. So I'm taking some 220 grit sandpaper and lightly sanding the entire surface. And that's really all that you need to do. I'm going to wipe this clean. And let's get a second coat on here. This time, instead of using a foam brush, I'm just going to take some on a paper towel and wipe it on. This will actually make it a little bit thinner. I'm still going to allow 15 minutes dry time. The nice thing about this, you can really put it on any way that you want. I can go in circles, I can go across the grain, doesn't really matter. The one thing that I like to do at the end is I'll just smooth everything out and take any pooling that is there and make sure it's all even. And that's how quick it is to do the second coat. Now in 15 minutes, this will be completely dry. We'll take a look at it, see how smooth it is. And we'll either do a third coat or I'm going to go ahead and spray it black. All right, yesterday I finished putting on uh, about three coats of the spray paint. So it's good and dry now this next morning. And I'm going to go ahead and put on some contact paper. Haven't used this before. This is actually shelf liner. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a try and see how it works. Because it's a lot less expensive than using actually the masking material for this. So we'll see what happens. Hey, I'm just going to roll out a section of this. And then I'm just going to cut it off. It'll be a little bit long, but that's okay. We'll trim it here in just a moment. There we go. And I'm going to peel this back part way. And stick this down. And I'm just going to pull it. Whoops. You need to stick it a little bit harder than that. Okay. All right.
Now you see this is a removable liner. So we'll see how well it sticks. And then I'm just gonna take and cut the edge. Okay, now I wanna make sure it sticks on here as well as it can. Okay, one of the things before I take it over to the CNC machine, I found that this contact paper was sticking so lightly that I just, without a doubt, knew that it was going to pull apart. So I grabbed a can of the 3M Super 77, peeled it back, sprayed it, and then put it back down, and I think that's going to hold a whole lot better. Okay, now that we got everything secured to the table, we're going to go ahead and follow the checklist and start to carve. In doing the carve, you can see in several places where the contact paper did release. But all in all, it held together quite well and it made for a very smooth carving. Uh, in looking at it, after I pulled it off of the machine, there was some sanding and cleanup that I needed to do. And primary, primarily, that was in the uh, pocket that needed to be cleaned out. But that's expected with the wood as soft as this is, being soft pine. Okay, you'll notice also that I have a pencil line that's drawn in. I wanted to be able to use the Offsetter app in Easel, but I really wasn't satisfied with the look that it created, so I just went ahead and hand draw, drew the uh, a line around the sign, then took it over to the bandsaw and cut it out. Okay, once the work was done at the bandsaw and I had it all cut out, then it was just time to go over to the oscillating sander and clean up the edges. It was important to have the edges nice and smooth because the router table was the next process. I just simply cut a nice chamfered edge onto the sign. Now it was time just to do the final cleanup. I took some regular uh, blue tape and masked off the areas that had torn loose and I was ready to paint. I put two coats of the red paint spraying all of the exposed areas red. I let the red paint dry for about an hour and then I started taking off the uh, masking. Quite frankly, I should have let it dry completely because the paint was still tacky, but I was eager to see what it looked like, so I went ahead and took the mask off. Because the red paint was still wet, I had to be very, very careful not to get the uh, paint onto the black surface. So all in all it went pretty well uh, but I did have some red hands and sticky fingers in the end. Using the contact paper as the masking actually worked quite well although I did have to use the uh, extra glue, that 3M77 glue to be able to secure it. It did release easily and it held for a good bond so it had some very nice sharp edges. So all in all, would I do this again? Yes, I think I would. This did work extremely well. The advantage of this also is the cost. This contact paper is very, very inexpensive. I think the entire roll was less than seven dollars. Can't really beat that. Once I completely removed all of the masking, I went ahead and let this dry completely for another 24 hours and then after that it was time to put the clear coat on. So I put three coats of the clear coat on to the uh, finished sign and I sanded with 220 grit paper between the coats. With the sign completely done you can judge for yourself but I think it turned out quite nice. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, 
please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.